Well, I just got done dropping off the wife and kid at the airport. Kind of sad I won't see them for about two weeks while uh, they visit family up in Alaska. Um, just kind of one of those things where I don't have enough time to do both and I really wanted to do this camp trip this week. So me and Lena here, we're hitting the road. It's uh, 6 p.m. on Sunday, July 3rd, and our plan is to head down to Oregon. And since it's already pretty late, as you can tell, uh, I'm not going to make it very far. So the plan is to overnight in some sketchy uh, rest area just south of Portland or something. Try and get there around 10 or 11 maybe. And, uh, and then in the morning I'll keep going south. And uh, I'm heading all the way down I-5, making it past Eugene. And, uh, and then I'll dip into the Cascades and kind of wander my way north. And that's kind of the plan. So. 61 degrees and kind of sprinkling out over here. It was downright pouring over in Seattle when I dropped the wife off and we're gonna hit the road so I'll, I'll catch you in a little bit. Good morning. I didn't really film much last night, but I made it to a rest stop just south of uh, Eugene, Oregon. It's a nice little spot right off the highway. It's uh, actually right next to a river, which is kind of nice, but um, it was dark when I showed up, quiet, not too many vehicles, and uh, I parked. Nobody bothered me. It's a lovely kind of little area. There's a couple other people sleeping in their cars, and uh, now it's 5 a.m., and I'm ready to hit the road. So. I'm all packed up. Me and Lena slept in the back. Hi, Lena. I've got everything all put away and uh, I'm ready to hit the road. So without further ado, let's keep going. Lena, come here. Come here. Up. Say hi. All right, I just pulled over here. Uh, we finally hit dirt and gravel, so I pulled over. I'm gonna air down the tires a bit just because the washboards are getting pretty gnarly and uh, you know the next however many 50, 100, 150 miles are gonna be uh, forest service roads or whatever. So. Uh, Gonna air down the tires and uh, continue on. There's like a million different ways to air down your tires. I've just been using one of these inflator kits that removes the uh, tire core or the, the stem valve core. Uh, I've also got those little Ston screw-on ones, and I have that two-tire inflator thing that I made that could deflate tires as well. But uh, I kind of like this one. I like the fidelity of it. It still doesn't take very long at all, especially because it removes the, the valve core. But um, I was running approximately 38 PSI or so on the highway this whole drive down. That seems to work good for my vehicle weight and wear. And uh, now that I'm kind of on washboard dirt roads, I'm going to go ahead and air it down to about 18 or so PSI to start with, just to kind of help take the harshness out of that. There's something I kind of wanted to show you guys, and that's the uh, the burned trees. This is something that I haven't really had a chance to be up close to yet. Not a whole lot of forest fires in the area that I grew up in in Alaska, but we're down here in Oregon now, and well, let's take a look. Looks like it wasn't all too, too long ago. Very crisp. You can see a lot of the grass and small brush starting to grow back, so starting to get back to normal. And actually some of these trees, if you look at 
the very top of them, they're still alive. And, uh, you know, I don't know a whole lot about tree types, I guess, but I do know that some tree species actually uh, can survive forest fires and thrive on the removal of underbrush. So I don't know if this is one of those fires or not, but uh, I just thought it was interesting to check out. And yes, I, uh, this isn't another day. I just changed my clothes. I was wearing comfy sweats and stuff because earlier I knew that I was going to be sleeping in a, uh, in a rest stop or whatever just on the road. So I wanted to make sure I was basically already in my pajamas. But now that I'm on the road, changed into my, my new clothes and uh, I'm ready to continue on. So just grab my dog. She's running around in the trees over there and uh, we'll get back at it. Nina, come. Good girl. All right, let's go. I guess even though I called Lena over, I wanted to show you guys my uh, current setup right here. This is for the me and my dog solo camp trip, primarily inside of the vehicle, but um, I did bring a cot, just a cot, no tent or anything. And I have my awning up here. So if the weather's nice and it's a good spot, not too buggy or whatever, maybe I can set up the cot down below and just sleep outside, but options, right? Um, so yeah, in here, if you've been on my channel before, then you know that uh, I built this platform. Uh, there's been quite a few modifications to it since I've built it, including wings and uh, a forward platform uh, that kind of makes this entire area just a nice sleeping area. Um, I won't get too much into detail on that because I'd like to make my own separate video, but for now you can see my sleeping pad. It's not fully compressed and rolled up because I used it uh, in the rest area last night. Um, I just kind of left it bundled up here. I'm using a Jackery 240 just to kind of power my stuff. I don't have any major power requirements, but primarily it serves to power my diesel heater if I choose to use it or just charge my random stuff like this, this camera. Um, this is a 55 quart cooler. Um, sorry, not sure what that is in liters, but it's way bigger than what I need. It's my family cooler. Like from when me, my wife and my son go out, uh, I don't have another cooler to use when it's just myself, so it is what it is. But the upside is all my tie downs and my setup are designed around family camping. So, you know, this cooler fits in fine and it's strapped down. Off to the side here, I have a uh, pop-up shelter. I've used this a couple times. I think I have like a, one of those little short videos on it um, on YouTube, but uh, it's just my little changing slash shower or poop tent. Um, I have a little toilet as well up uh, in the roof box right here my cooking bin i've got them all labeled down here is recovery that bin's pretty heavy it's got an air compressor in it um, recovery straps uh, soft shackles and uh, bow shackles for the winch um, and random other things like a, a saw i opted not to bring a chainsaw on this uh, trip i do have an electric chainsaw now but i just opted to bring the um, fold out bow saw. Hopefully uh, the roads that I'm traveling have been traveled before me and they've already been cleared. So we'll see. Otherwise, you know, with the bow saw, I can tackle some decently sized trees, but you know, I'm not going to be clearing out a whole fallen forest area. And that's really it for back here. Um, a new addition to the vehicle are these, uh, what are they, molly panels covering the, the back windows. I haven't fully outfitted them yet, but I, I do have my first aid kit, which is uh, actually from an Audi. It's the Audi stock first aid kit that I've supplemented with a couple extra, like knickknacks and gauze and um, painkillers and stuff like that. And then I've got uh, some solar lights and that's pretty much it for over here. Some other things, like I think this has all my uh, bug repellent and uh, spare um, poop collection bags, air mattress uh, inflator, Jackery power stuff. On this side, um, I've got my paper towels, which honestly, 
if you go camping regularly or you have children, having paper towels accessible in the vehicle is super nice. I've already used it with the dog. I gave her a bunch of water and she puked it up, so that's nice. Um, and then I do have just like a, like a Molly pouch thing that's full of, like I think it's got some fire starter and a knife and some lights and random stuff in it. So not a whole lot going on there. Up here I have just kind of like a cheap, I think it was like 12 USD uh, roof net thing, ceiling net. And in it, I'm using it to hold my uh, Reflectix window shades for when I sleep inside the car. And uh, a new little pouch here has a bug net that goes over the door windows. So if it's hot out, maybe I can pop that open and, and use that. We'll see how that goes. I haven't even opened it yet. And then I have a pillow because I'm a glamper, at least when I'm car camping and having a full size pillow is really nice and it's really easy to take along. So that's a great spot to store it because it stays clean and out of the way and uh, you know, it doesn't take up room down here. Over here, um, you know, I just got changed. So uh, I've, I've been experimenting with these kind of clothing packing bags just to keep things organized. I've got enough for my whole family, but it just sort of keeps everything looking nice and organized. And then obviously I've got my, my new panel here. Um, I will show you guys this real quick. Access hatch. I've got some stuff stored. So right now it's just some spare whatever stuff. This is my shovel. Um, it, it like full, uh, screws together or whatever. I'll, maybe I'll show you later. Tripod, diesel heater vent, some snacks, whatever. I think this is coffee. This is my uh, 20 liter water jug with a little electric faucet thing on it. That thing works great. And I've got the other seat folded down with the the base or uh, the butt portion removed. Um, that just provides more room and then I was able to put some stuff up, for, up front. So that's pretty much it. Uh, now we will actually hit the road. It's only 63 degrees out right now really not very warm so it's quite pleasant to drive around and wear clothes and not be overheated I'm not much of a heat guy which will be something I'll have to get over if I ever want to go visit like Utah or Arizona or Death Valley California you know what I mean but for now we are just going to continue on this windy road and see where it takes us. Yeah, these logs are really what I'm talking about. Even if I had brought my chainsaw, I don't really know. I think it would struggle to get through that. It's not a huge chainsaw, you know? Um, and obviously I'm not bow sawing uh, a 1.5 foot diameter tree. Well, I've stopped here just for some lunch and I wasn't gonna show you guys, but there are a couple cool things in this little uh, primitive campground that I found that I wanted to kind of point out. Uh, first one is uh, these trees. Pretty cool. Take a look at the, uh, oh gosh, we always called it old man's beard, but it's probably some sort of lichen or moss, probably a moss, but You see that growing on the trees like that? I mean, usually I see it hanging off of uh, branches, but this is the first time I've really seen it on the actual uh, tree itself. Pretty cool. Another cool thing I sort of wanted to point out is over here, there's this big tree and uh, I, I think it's a redwood tree. I, God, I really want to get like a, a booklet for the, the Pacific Northwest. I mean, I think that might be a redwood tree and I mean its size definitely looks like it pretty cool and then uh, you know I can take you guys over here real quick where they had the fella tree they cut it down and uh, 
typically, at least in areas like this, if they do that, it's because the tree was probably dying or dead and it's dangerous. I mean, this is a campground. Let's see if I can. <laughs> Still wearing the sandals. But yeah. Pretty good size. Good size stump here. Going off that way. That's probably at least three, three or four foot in diameter. Let me count the rings. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> all right, I'm all, I'm all done counting the rings. Uh, believe it or not, I counted approximately a hundred. So yeah, this tree was about a hundred years old. And uh, I mean, while it's a pretty good sized tree, there are some monsters out here that are quite a bit bigger than this, including a uh, stump over there and some some other large trees that I passed on my way out here So I do like a good old-fashioned giant tree All right, uh, I think we're gonna get out of here and keep going. We got to put some miles under us I have no idea if we'll make it to the campsite that uh, I have planned We'll see Come on, Lena. Let's get out of here. This is an absolute unit of a tree. I don't think you can really tell. I don't think you can really tell from uh, this camera because it's kind of wide angle, but that has to be seven, about seven foot in diameter. So as I approach my campsite that I have planned out, I always get nervous. Uh, you know, even though I've barely seen, I think I've seen two other vehicles out on the road trails today, I still get nervous that my campsite's gonna be taken and then, you know, I'll have to find something else. But yeah, I'm making my way up here. Hopefully it's uh, not occupied and we can have a, a cool spot. Well, I lucked out and the spot's available. Oh, let's see what we got here. Let me lean out. This, uh, it's a little overcast and actually, <laughs> funny enough, I saw snow on the way up on the road. I didn't get any video of it, but maybe on the way back down, I'll get some video because uh, it's kind of funny, but you, yeah, over in the distance you can see some snow on the mountain and then over there off that way. So I'll have to check. I want to say we're at probably around 5,000 or so feet, but what a cool spot. These Oregon Buttes, they have volcanic cinder, which is just something that I'm not used to from, you know, Washington. But yeah, what a cool spot. Well, uh, I'm gonna dick around with the car for a little bit and see if I can get it into a spot that I like and, and sort of get settled in. And it's about 3.20 p.m. So I've got plenty of time to hang out and kind of get settled. Well, it started raining on me pretty good, so I got the awning out. I didn't film any of it, but I, I got it set up pretty quick. Lena's enjoying herself. So for dinner today, uh, I've got some carne asada meat. I'm not making it super fresh or anything. It's already sort of prepared. Um, 
it's been frozen in my uh, cooler so I took it out a little while earlier and let it thaw. So I'm gonna make some rice aroni to kind of go with it just some like Mexican style rice or whatever and then I do have a uh, green bell pepper here. Um, when I'm just solo cooking I'm trying to be a little bit more minimalist I guess so uh, you know compared to car camping I guess this would be minimalist um, I do like to use this butane stove um, it's not as good as uh, propane but it does work pretty well and it has a really small form factor so I'm using that in conjunction with this uh, jet boil pan I bought this pan specifically because it uh, it's like 10 inches in diameter and it has a high like one and a half inch or something like that uh, straight lip and so you can almost use it like a bowl right it's not just like a saucepan and it's not like a small bowl it's sort of a combo so it's really utilitarian and then I've got you know the the lid that goes with it and uh, you know maybe one day I'll have a real jet boil but for now I've got their pan so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this well I'm all done my carne asada, Mexican rice, and uh, green bell pepper. It's not pretty, I'm not a chef, but it's uh, it's delicious. I'm just eating it straight out of the bowl like an animal. And uh, Lena here really likes it. She's been following me around. I gave her some scraps. And yeah, I think uh, I think I'm just gonna eat my my dinner that is way more food than I need so I'll probably have some leftovers I'll put in a little container save it for a, a midnight snack or something and we're just gonna chill out maybe go for a little walk there's a little bit of a, a point out here like a rock, rocky outcrop and uh, I think I think it could be fun to walk out there and just see if there's any you know dead bodies or something going to go out to this little rocky out outcropping check it out I wonder if we'll be able to see the road I took it's one of those roads that kind of like loops around you know to get up to the top cool I wonder what mountain that is over there. I'm gonna have to look it up. So I did a little bit more research and I'm 99% sure that mountain off in the background there is uh, Diamond Peak in uh, Oregon here. And it's, uh, it's like 8,000 something foot elevation. So pretty cool, kind of neat mountain. I wish the clouds weren't there so that I could see it a little better, but now I know. The sun is, uh, it's out, which is nice, but it is sort of starting to set. And I think I'm gonna call it an evening. Probably uh, hang out, goof off around camp for a little bit longer, and then uh, and then get in bed and call it a night. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, I'll see you in the morning. We'll start again. See you later. <laughs>